So if we start to think about inputs and outputs, and the different types of objects that you can use in Grasshopper, what types of Grasshopper objects do you think would be needed to create something like a rectangle? Well, on the bottom right, you can see that the drawing here shows a few things or designates a few things uh, that might be relevant. For instance, there is a little X at the center of the rectangle. So perhaps the center would be really important. You can see there are two radius values um, that are defined. So that could be something very relevant for us. So let's take a look at how we can create that rectangle in Grasshopper. Now, in top view, I have my points that I created. And here in Grasshopper, if you remember, the tabs are organized based on the types of objects that they contain. A rectangle is a NURBS curve. So it would be found in the curve menu. Specifically, it's a primitive type of curve. And at the bottom right, you can see that there is an object called rectangle. If I drop this object down onto the canvas, I can see that it is orange because it is missing some of the data it needs in order for it to function. And if I mouse over the inputs, I can see that P asks for a base plane. So what construction plane and where would you like to create that rectangle? X asks for the dimensions of the rectangle in X, Y, and then the fillet radius if, you were like, if you'd like to create a radius corner. Well, construction plane, base plane. We can see here in top view that by default the world X, Y plane is used. If we go to the vector menu, we can see that there are a whole collection of objects for creating planes. I like to think of these as construction planes because that's exactly what you do. You construct on them. So if we grab the plane at the top right, you can see that there is an object called world XY plane. If I right click on O, you'll see that we can set one point, essentially the origin for the XY plane. Now one thing to note is that here in the command line, you have multiple options for how you would like to specify a reference. In this case, coordinate, or if I click again, I can select point. I'm going to select my point, and now you can see a preview of the construction plane here located at my point. Since I now have a construction plane, I can take the output and drop it into P, designating where this rectangle will be created. And now I can drop in two sliders and a third one for the radius corner. So I'll go to params, input, number slider, connect that to X, copy and paste to Y, and copy and paste to the corner radius. By increasing the dimensions of my slider, I can see that I now have a rectangle. If I turn the preview off of my plane, which can be accessed by right-clicking on its name, you can see that this object is no longer displayed in Rhino. Now, that's a very important thing, because if you notice, as I right-click on its nickname here at the middle, you have an option to turn the visibility of objects on and off from coming out of Grasshopper and being rendered in Rhino. 
However, if you notice, these objects are not selectable in Rhino because really all they are are previews coming out of Grasshopper. If you'd like to take a moment to go ahead and name your sliders, you might call this X dimension, Y dimension, and radius. So thinking algorithmically, if you remember an algorithm is really just a sequence of operations. In an algorithmic process, what you're really doing is figuring out what the desired output is within the process, what input you might need in order to arrive at that output, and what is the various steps or processing that needs to occur to make that happen. In this case, I would like to create a rectangle. But I need to know first that that rectangle will need to have an origin or a construction plane to be drawn upon, a length in X and Y, as well as a corner radius. The result of this is a rectangle whose width and height are equal to the X and Y inputs. Another object we're going to take a quick look at is the panel. From params input, we were able to grab a number slider. This number slider, slider, we can drag the grip from right to left to change. And if you notice, below the number slider is an object called the panel. This is a very handy object because you can double click and speci specify a value like zero and hit OK. You can notice that it can be resized. And you can take the output of this panel directly in to replace the radius slider. And I'll just delete this. Panels are great for values that are maybe a little bit more fixed, something that you don't want to change as often or have access to a slider for. But a panel is also very interesting because if you drop another one down, you'll see that it will display, in this case, the output of the rectangle dynamically. If I change a slider, you can see that the panel here will update to show that change. It's a very nice feature. Now, as you're modeling, you'll notice that when you're selecting objects in Grasshopper, there will be a feedback change that occurs in Rhino. In this case, the object is red coming out of Grasshopper to let you know that in Rhino, that object is being drawn. If you select the rectangle object, its color status will change in order to show you that it is currently selected. Remember that points in Grasshopper are drawn as X's. Take a second to drop down a point container from params geometry. Right click and set one point. You'll see here that that point is rendered as an X and when selected will change its color. If I wanted to take the output of this into here, I could directly connect this, and now move my point to see my rectangle update. I'm going to save this as my second grasshopper file. 